the information. Oh, oh. this is a huge flank. Batty's going to go down. Great stuff there from Shallowby. That's going to kick off the action as the B push comes through now. And it's looking really great here for Anubis off of the start. Kidspawn is responding, but it is a labored effort into that B site. Frost will finish off the remainder there. It's just one left. Oh, oh that's not by time here. And Anubis have been very proactive in terms of getting information when they need it to understand what Project S is doing. So they can set up against it. Although actually going for the creep through the smoke will actually backfire this time around. Project S really taking their time and trying to be cautious here. Anubis have U-Haul control right now, thanks to that toxic screen. That's going to allow Anubis to actually get more forward position to start pinching onto this spike plant. And not a lot of positioning here for the likes of Project S, but they're looking good. Just two players left for Anubis Player now. Three. They're not able to find the damage that they're Five looking for. It's looking to be a flawless at this point. And it looked pretty good. I mean, the fact that it's a bonus... Oh, oh we can't. Actually, the Guardian Light going through the TP, and they're going to actually pinch from Showers onto Project oh, S. Man. And, oh, it's not working out. Batty with a fantastic defense against that early aggression from Anubis, which has backfired enormously. Only two players left against the four for Project S. So Anubis are going to have to do something quite magnificent. And the odds are certainly not in their favor. But we can't put it past them. Tuna looking to regain control of u to start things off. Oh, the timing is fantastic. Takes down Kisport. Almost a second there against Silent. Attack from Frost. Can't find the finish. And now the position is known for Frost. So it will be very difficult for him to find his way forward onto a frag. Actually, to clear out the U side. Looks like we'll get the showstopper coming through to triple. Oh, we're actually going to be able to dodge that one. That's a huge one. There's a snake oh. like to delay. Oh, I don't think it landed on the mark though. So, oh, Johnny down to one. Able to keep, uh, keep himself alive though. Spike is planted. Three player retake. There is an orbital strike available for Anubis. But the issue is that these players on the defense are so spread out. It might be hard to make that orbital strike work out. Might want to try to hold on to that. We'll see how this goes though. Kispawn announces his position, shooting down the drone. Oh, the instant flash comes through. Zizox is going for it. Escaping for the TP though. We'll keep Kispawn alive. The pressure comes through. The rolling thunder to secure things. It's looking very difficult here for Anubis to try to get this defuse going. It is painfully slow now to try to get on top of that spike. Kispawn now reveals his position. It's just a full rush up this short B, uh, long B position and it's looking really nice here. We talked about this before, it's a great way to just remove variables that could be a problem. Yeah. Keep spike it really planted. simple, everyone bursts onto the site, you get the spike planted. It's, oh, well hang on for a second, Watching Tuna's looking smoke. to get the smokes out here. They're going to go for it right through this window and it just takes one quick headshot. There we go from Tuna, he's got the orbital strike out and ready and there it goes. Can they make something work off the, of the back of this one? Tuna with another headshot. S has gone so far, they're going for a buy here right now and an aggressive push towards the hookah side. Looks like the defense is working up quite nicely there. Shall it be able to defend here? That's the Phantom in hand, still has bullets to go, still has pain shells, still is delaying this push. And Project S now are in a really difficult position. The spike is down in that smoke, they can recover it. But they're going to commit into this one, they want to go all in. And it's looking like it might actually work out. Orbital Strike is available as well for Project S. Tuna now trying to assist, oh no, there it is, the Orbital Strike. Can Tuna escape in time? Just barely into the smoke. And now Silent around the corner is defending this hookah Remaining. position, takes down, finishes off. Completely right. Isolating the fights is the way to win this one. And this is one. It's actually a freebie. Beautiful from Crawler. It's just one more to go. That has no idea where the last player is. Could be absolutely anywhere. Drops the Viper's Pit. And now that's going to force Kispawn to give his position oh. away. There goes the Molly, though. That's gone very early. And so that's going to force the Brim out of that position, out of showers. And there's a tap again. And. At the same time, it is a dangerous dance because if you do fall to a sheriff hedge or something like that, opportunities can be created. In fact, the showstopper comes out here. It is anti-eco. Really trying to keep... Oh, hello. Okay. Zizox is going very aggressive with the guiding light. And that's amazing work. Tuna now to follow this up with the sheriff from behind the toxic screen. Looking for the timing. Goes through. Can't find the headshot. It's Janning to defend it. And now it's going to get very difficult for Anubis. Oh, the range is perfect for the judge. 
and has control of the spike. Showstopper's out here. Ping. Big problems for Project S. They've got to try to escape this showstopper running oh, all the way deep into showers. Yet. And this has cleared so much position now for Anubis to defend the spike. That is insane. The fact that he's able to go for that right angle just on the left side, the off angle to get the kill with the judge. And forcing out the Viper's Pit at the beginning, this is potentially another Thrifty coming in. But there's almost no time oh, left. Yeah. They know the opposition's coming down towards short eight. I have ten seconds. Left. They're gonna take the fight. They can try to force him to part the spike. They have to go back to part the spike. And that will separate the two players. Beautiful play, so smart. Out comes Johnny though, takes one down, but there's no time. And Anubis have advantages in info. But speaking of that, we've got Project S saying that's enough. We're gonna go aggressive into this A site right now. And they've managed with the paint shells to open up position for that spike to be planted safely. And now it's a retake territory here for Anubis. And it's going to be tough, but they do have the Seekers available. Yeah, and as they're rotating back, it's actually going to come from the spawn side too, so it might not give that much information, especially if throwing on the attacker side, so it just has to be alert play. And he's about to come across. They know this Pulse Plant play, so he's going to get this kill. That's a great opening there. We've got the Boom Bot and also the Pain Shells doing lots of damage. Batsy does respond to keep the flank safe here for Project S to protect this spike. But there's the tap. We've got Anubis coming closer and closer. They're getting the kills here. Kisspawn with another defensive frag. And that spike is starting to tick quite a lot right now. We need to get that defuse to come in quickly for Anubis. Wow. Nice shot from Batsy. And it's Siege. Yeah, it's just going to be Krolo on his own as well. The delay is coming in, but unfortunately, spray is due to talk to the screen. This is going to be an open sight. So right now the defenders are rotating across, but they don't really have that much in terms of money, but at least Tuna is able to get that creep up kill onto Kispawn, and that's an upgraded weapon, and they could do a little bit more damage at least, but we have a ruling thunder though from Lion Claw. This could be dangerous for the retake. Yeah, that's a great pick. I mean, that's both. Pulling out the iPad when you're basically in, <laughs> in the uh, defender spawn. I respect it. And now we've got the U-Haul take coming in, and the spray from Yanni is looking like it could have been great, but Shalady shuts it down. And that's now a very scary situation. Project S, they have that Rolling Thunder, just like you said. They've got to use that at the perfect moment here. But it's looking really good. There goes the Rolling Thunder. Oh out God. comes Lion Claw. They're trying to capitalize to play off of this. There's the fast point. Comes through Lion Claw again. One more player to go back at u Hall. Shalabi is going to get hit by that four line. More utility coming through. There is Project S but the Hunter Fury coming through. And Yanni going through the satchels, trying to look for some targets. Rocket is out. And there is the target. And that is a very dead shoot. <laughs> and Shalabi, not too much he can do there as well. That flash comes through and the utility is very difficult to handle. They didn't have the weaponry and they don't have the... Need to get that spike planted. Flank is coming from Kispawn. And they hear that one, but the 1v1 is pretty huge. Who wins this? Kispawn does. That's, that's a really big win. Janny takes one down with the paint shells. So now there's a huge pinch happening and the spike didn't get planted. This is very problematic for Anubis. Yeah, now they're even falling back, uh, understanding it for Project S that they have the player's advantage. They're also comfortable giving out the spike away if there's a TP, that's where the Brimstone's falling back, but they're pushing back towards U-shaped hallway for Project S, and it's looking to be a flawless so far. Zizox is still looking for that kill against that Brimstone. Finally, here's a teleporter coming out. It's just going to be so hard for him to hold. A flash just around the corner, the right clicks on the first, looking for the second one, but uh, as we have the match resuming here, Jenny's going really aggressive there. Oh, oh even though he's my. concussed, gets those few key spectacles, and in fact, keeps pushing. Keeping that pressure up. Kispawn is there as well. They're going to... Yeah, we saw that 1v1 found against Viper on the, the site. And Anubis, again, it was a big question mark as to where they were going to go. And so they contacted onto that B site and got the 1v1, won that entry. And now they've got this very favorable situation. But can't put it past Project S. There's the drone that's going to spot Frost. And he's going to get... Well, rather, Kismore gets taken down as Project S try to get their way onto that spike. But time is really up One the essence. And now there's just not enough to contact play from Anubis. Up B long is going to be able to help them. Maybe dodge the flash, but no, Kismore pulls out a frag regardless. And that allows Line Claw to, uh, to escape that. We here for the macro side of the game here, understanding the defender rotations. And as you say, walking into a, a clear B site. Project S still have that showstopper though, and here it comes. Janny pulls it out off the back of the satchel, straight through the poison orb, looking for the first target. We'll find it in the tube. That's Tuna gone. Silent in this 1v1 here, trying to find a way to, to survive. Frost looking to get the reposition, able to make his way around the corner, keeping the pressure onto Janny now. The stick, oh, can he stop it in time? No! Get a recon, I will get a tag actually, and the orb will be heard. 
So two players here. Oh, the showstopper comes through from Shalabi. Trying to get the entry for the team. Anibis able to get yeah, those entries. Try to, I mean, they will get the spike on as well. We get the Viper's Pit activated. Oh, nice and as you say, that extra pick, that might really help to seal the deal here because there's not a lot left for Project S. Stuck behind so much utility, but Simon still somehow gets a kill. That said, Anubis know precisely where they are. And that Molly's just going to delay things even more. Oh, it's actually going a bit too deep. Oh, it's the Hunter Fury in response from Batty at backside. Seeker's coming through here. Simon's still holding onto Hookah. So this is actually quite good for Project S to try to keep this defense coming, to try to keep the delay to allow the rest of those A players to come through. But this is so, oh my God, this everything's happening. It was Vansilia. <laughs> that, it was going to be the round where all the ultimates came out because that Wooly Thunder came out at the same time too. So as much as they didn't get that much from clear sights, there's lots you can do with it. And they do look like they are gearing up for an A split at the moment. And we have Shadows Control oh, yeah. from Project S. Forward smoke, so really Fire important here, fight here. Oh, Kiss Spawn is going to take down one, and there goes the Orbital Strike. So, indeed, massive fight on Showers. One that will be uh, won here by Anubis, but Lionclaw, he's still alive and kicking, doing damage. Out comes the knife. <laughs> he wanted that Vandal out. He misclicked for sure. <laughs> Anubis in 3v2 off the block now. Simon nice Mice opening there. Dropping out of heaven. Oh no, spot Sizox. The distance advantage there paying off. And now Frost is alone. Frost should never have been alone, but this is the position he finds himself in. There comes the tax, goes through the all but it's me! To start things off, they are not letting go right now for Project S. Look how aggressive this is towards that B main side. The backpack sticks through, and Sizox is looking for the kill, but it does not work. And we've got a rotation coming through here already. It's going to be an interesting one here. The defense, almost the attack here coming from B-Long. Oh, great shot down there from Frost. Gizbon, though, in the action. There's the Devourer getting that health back. But the Spike, it has free ability to just move back to that A site. And I'm wondering if they're going to be choosing this. We've got a couple players left for Anubis trying to slow things down. But after all is said and done, Anubis only with two here to play this post plant on the A site. Yeah, it absolutely will be. They need to get the early kills here. Well, there's a chance, but it's not going to work out. Crawl has to hit some insane headshots with the ghost, but the whips on the mid tube. And Baddy's going to spot this. The spray comes through. The trade is there for Anubis. So that's actually already a big win. Here's spawn. Ooh. Headshot from the Marshal. Fantastic stuff here on the defensive project. But this is so difficult. And we actually are going to see Project S going aggressive. They just want to take the fight to them. And, well, it's gonna work out. I mean, good advantage for Project S, right? This is like pretty much a second bonus round for them. Trina trading onto Batty. So, again, this can go very wrong here. Kissborn, though, going aggressive. It has to be so careful. Able to find the back of one, but the trade comes through. Lionclaw with another flank. Are they ready for it? No. The spike is down on the ground now. Lionclaw is wrapping around, finishing them off. It's just one player left. Chrono's picked up a Spectre. If can get a good timing, there it is, there is. I know operators coming out too because it's been expensive so far in the first few rounds. And Janny's pushing forward, he lines up a few. Very aggressive opening and again, that's what we know with these two teams. We like these early fights, but we'll get a commitment here from Anubis into that A site. They have a lot to be up against and already you have to worry about those flanks as well. You can see Simon just playing it very patient. Oh. Gets so much damage with that Phantom. Now it's just one left. Frost alone with very low points of health. Peak as well, and actually he dashes in the wrong spot. He's looking for some cover. He'll get, at the same time, a heal. Updraft to even bring the fight forward. Oh, has a little gap here to look over. I don't know if they understand that. Oh, oh my god, that was close. close. <laughs> <laughs> but hang on, this is a problem right now here. Because Yanni's going to go down there, and the Viper's Pit comes in counter for Anubis. This would be a thrifty if they pick up this round. There's a gun forward to be collected. And Project S, they already use the drone. They don't have a lot of utility to make this right. one happen. It's going to have to be an Alum drone, or sorry, a recon guard into the site to see if anything's going to happen. But this is smart. They're working the extremities first. Now they're going to the Viper's Pit with bodies, and it's working out. Sizzox that's coming in from the back. I don't know if they, they don't know what Sizzox is just yet. The res come through. Sizzox has to play the timing perfectly. I mean, this could be where the round could be won potentially if Sizzox is going to have a big result. And oh no, the whiff comes through there for Sizzox. And that's a problem. It's looking really good here for Project S. Anubis has that Hunter's Fury. There it goes. That's going to help to protect that spike plant. But there is some flanks coming. 
Two players on the flank here. Kispawn leading the charge with that Reina. Kispawn finds one on the ropes. And the follow-up is strong as well. Clearing things up. It's going to be very hard now from Shalabi. That pressure on the A site here. Watching for the flank. Batty, though, is going to send the Hunter's Fury early. It catches... You're really just going to have to count on potentially arena to get something done but his spawn on the other and there you go shallaby does get the kill does have a bit of the kit left but solid pushes out on that second kill so our four and one the spike is down crollo with no hp left as he's ticking down from that poison cloud there's not much left here dan no absolutely not it's just it's oh that's a nice shot at least for probably can reset it as well yeah pitch is coming in from the backside too he's not going to be in a good spot even if he wants to save right now on the retake for Project S after. They've had success the last time they were on a half buy, but this time will it work out? So far, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, there's the, so much information there for Project S. They pushed A all the way yeah. at the same time, so they know precisely where all players are for Anubis. So Anubis are really fighting against everything here, and getting the spike plant will be okay. difficult, but the uh, Sheriff Frag, maybe things get somewhat easier. We'll have to see. They haven't managed to plant the spike, and you've got to be able to find a way to do that with the wall up here. Not a lot of utility left as well. Comes a recon. Nice. He destroyed and looking for those shots. And it's so difficult if you can't get the spike down quickly. Yeah. Got you nothing get, left. You get into this spot here where yeah, you, you can't, you don't have cover to do it. And even if they decide to fall back, you mentioned it, Dan, just earlier. We actually have Jenny left. pushed all the way, all the way out towards spawn site. There you go. Shallaby gets an opening here towards Snowman. They're going to try to fight against Kispawn. There's only 20 seconds left, so they have to act quick. They have to try to take him down, but he's also close and low on HP. But Kispawn, man, he's been looking good on this mid side. side. So they are looking to scale early. They are looking to fight Janny. And here you go, that recon that came out. So that is the key plan right now. Stop him first, but Kispawn is that second point that they can't get over. And this is great, as you say. Took down Janny, operated down. They've got the lockdown in big... Oh, okay. Kispawn looks like he wants to get aggressive here. I feel like with how he's been playing, yeah. you can't really blame him. You and we ha there it is. There's the attacker lockdown. Just keeping it simple. They can go for the A hit. Off of the back of this one. They've got the toxic screen there as well for the afterplant that goes across the screen. And Tunis, he sniped off Batty. This is a great look here. Anubis, five versus three here. Trying to get that first round on the board. Here's Spawn wrapping his way around. Going to drop down. Looks for the first oh. two opening jewels here. Oh, one. Oh, no. Kid Spawn is absolutely eating them up here. Oh, it just gets worse here for Anubis. Can nothing go right for them? Kid Spawn looking to lock away. Plan, this and then is the snake bite, but it doesn't come through in time. Attack for that round was just so nice. This is, this is, at this point, Dan, I, I'm, I'm afraid to say it, but it might be Project S's map just dominantly on, on this on this app as well. Yeah, there's, there's definitely some more points to make there, but we'll, we'll go and see if Anubis can find anything off the back of this. Trying to just capitalize the fast push onto this A site. Maybe the frustration here could work out in their favor. Viper's Pit comes in, and Batty will be consumed by that. He's going to be committed to push forward through it. We'll see what he's able to do here. This could get very chaotic. Kispawn back mm. to his usual tricks here. Only three left for Anubis now, but... Up against three as well. Oh, now, now it's just one. The Viper. Crawler has to try to clutch this against three players. Finds a second, but if it's not going to be Kispon going towards the lower if, side, it's it's Jenny on the top. Kispon, and there you go. <laughs> he thinks he's in the, he wanted to be in the show match. And this is looking definitely like quite the showing from him. Yeah. And really flexing against Anubis right now, making it as... This is insane. This is no respect right now. You've got to earn the respect back if you're Anubis. Yes. And at this point, Dan, I don't know if it's going to be this map or the next map, right? Bow down and, and, and be okay with it, that the fact that it's your map pick and it's been so one-sided the first time, I think they could still bring it in the moment. And so we're going to see, once again, the aggression. Why not? Project S have just been crushing it with this, and Kispawn again is just working on that highlight reel at the moment. And even at that point, once they decide to fall back, they're getting hit by shock darts towards that backside too. The mid side still pushing forward. Look at where Silent is. He's in a great position right now, just by the orb side. Is about to come across and get the headshot there onto Zizok. So everything's being on lockdown on left and right side. And the thing is, mid has not been taken that many times by Anubis. When they tried to take mid side, they actually walled up the underpass to go through Boiler and still got, uh, unfortunately, denied out of that. So I think trying to take two control, trying to take under Spike under middle, trying to go for those type of splits instead, maybe could work out. 
and even give up the A side if you want. You already know the game plan. So far, it's been those two same players. The lower for Anubis, and it's the pistol round. You know, everybody has been made equal here in terms of the economy, the ultimates, just everything. So well, this is the best chance for Anubis. Try to test. Get the burst onto that B site. Lots of damage to Snake by might slow things nice down a little bit. However, Krollo is pinned down, can't escape, gets taken out. Wow, okay. Lovely, aggressive ice wall into spawn. That's going to slow things down here for Anubis on the retake. But to connect the classic bullets, so Elite Unit takes down Batty. Might be still a chance here now, even though there's all this positioning in favor of Project S. Just going to hit a few headshots. Oh, Jack just going to go straight through. No respect. Two players left here for Anubis. Not much left here, Dan. His spawn is really so devastating. Stop here for Anubis on the front B side. And the spit is indeed on here. Frost will take down Kispawn with the double shot dart. Really nicely done there, but it, it's down to Krollo. has got to get some value. Nice one from Krollo. Oh There's a second as well. And the trade is through from Janny, but that will make it a two versus two here. The spike has to go down if Tuna picks his timing well. And he does! Oh, He'll finish it off! Oh, 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 oh. But Wizard Fancy, we're seeing Anubis maybe taking it a little bit too far here. Charlie, yeah. I think, was spotted because of how aggressive they are. They can give up the A site if they hold on to a, a, if the A main position, but Shalabi's now out there by himself. Jenny with a jab through off the back of the flash, takes down Tuna, and now this forward control will be huge. A oh. main is lost as well. Frost takes down Jani, but an advantage here still on players. Project S, four versus three, catching the rotates, Batty, and on that fight that he Five just had the weaker eight. weapon and unfortunately couldn't capitalize on One the kill. So it's looking to be a, a better round now for Project S. Not too much going on for the bonus round for Anubis. Two kills so far, two players low on HP, could maybe capitalize. Actually, this could be different. He picked up right now a Phantom, and this, oh, this Seekers is gonna spot him both. Yeah, that's a lot of information. Krollo is trying to make this one do the one back boathouse. He knows it as he charges it down. Oh, comes out with a jumping classic. Oh, and he snaps Silent down. One more to go here for Krollo. Kind of oh. far, but still, we're playing a very passive tree catwalk side. Finally, a small rotation coming out from Anubis as Tuna is trying to make it through, but he gets punished right away. Yeah, the bait on the drone is going to be what it takes to do him in. And Daddy with a nice backstab there. It looks like Anubis just reading the play a little bit too slow this yep. time around. That's given Protoss a solid opportunity here. And it, it just looked like when they got that first information towards that game. Oh, no. oh, the spike's okay. down in the corner. That's that's a big all sort of taking post part position, but now the spike's down. Oh, I think that no one hit the switch, and the guy caught holding the spike and went back to go and do it, crossing the line of sight of an opponent. At least they got ult. They got ult for a plant. The they, they had to force it out, but at least they got it. And all the time that's been bought here, but Batty on the flank could be the saving grace here for Project S. They have no idea about this flank. Free kill on the Sova. Frost is down. Kisborn in a very important 1v1. Has to win this one, and he will. So on this 4 versus 1, seems as though it might not happen for Shalabi as he's looking to get this pick on the lurk on tree side. And eventually he get to get some timing here, but in fact they're just gonna roll in thunder straight through. <laughs> it's gonna go down straight away. And that opening is gonna allow Project S to pick up the pace. But the response here in mid from Shalabi will catch Batty, so that will help to equalize on the numbers. But the positional game is interesting here. Anubis have the showstopper to get back into the site if they want to. And that's why it's not even down just yet. And the damage is coming through. Oh, there's very little places to stand at this point. Shock yeah. should do it! And that's down. That, oh, Russ, rather, that's a spike now down. So problems here for Project S. This is just madness all over. Oh, they have to go and get the spike, but Sizzle just to make it five to one into this round, and it looks to be very explosive. A flash and dash on the top of the generator, the plane towards hell. The legs are shut off, and it's a four on four. Kidsborn making his way forward now, and oh, oh, okay. gets it in the butt there by that Hunter's Fury. Very early lockdown, but this is good. And this is a nasty off angle here. In fact, it's still even Spike active down, that off angle. Hopelessness setting in for Batty. Left. Seeing a spike down in that position. It's crazy. Knowing that one's tiles, but of course we know that that is half of the story. Last player standing. They're probably not even going to see 
the sky in that corner because he's aiming for a shallow B, but the second one's never going to come out. Coming through now, the flash will allow Jenny to go forward, but Tuna was totally protected from that, ready for the dash play as well. We've seen it a few times. Aftershock is dodged as well. Tuna still holding onto tree. A couple players now from Project Death trying to take this site, but Dizog's creeping deeper, getting the angles. There's not too much here for, on the site for Project S. The Seeker's coming through as well. Oh, should have been an easy finish, but Gisborn stays alive somehow to take down one. But the reinforcements, the cavalry, have arrived. That They've corrected the situation, and that site is clean. Now it's just a case of one man. Batty against three, left. and it's certainly not a good look. There's so much to worry about, and they're going to double peak. But into this round here, they are found a success towards that B side. They're going to try it again. Yeah, and we'll see a you very fast run. split. They like these B splits. There goes the lockdown as well, and this is going to be difficult here for Anubis. They have a player isolated on the site, and as Prolo gets flashed, gets taken down, and this is a good start here for Project S. A five versus three post one. Even on this retake now. Killjoy, she's not going to have too much of her utilities. The Nanostorm's already placed back towards the A side. You might have the Recon Dart coming up quite soon after this Owl Drone. Actually, they still have a Paranoia. This, after this information that they see nothing towards B main from this flank, it's all towards the site. This could be the biggest Paranoia ever. And there is that Paranoia, and here comes Tuna trying to find the jewels. Frost takes down Batty, four players left to go on this site. They are all bunched up here. This might be doable. Good defense from Jani, but... Still, Anubis press on, they press forward, the oh. pistol has to come out, the classic. Oh, the flash has come out, the falling oh, thunder comes through, that's there for the player's back boathouse, but I think Frost will be able to reset off of that rolling thunder. In just in time, Odin though, close range, this might be difficult. Oh, there's the wrap, but Frost still gets the frag, that's actually pretty good, better than expected, I think. As we'll see, Anubis now trying to retake control onto the cyber, Batty in this corner by the logs. We'll see if he's able to do much here. Zizox is able to eliminate that position. Now it's down to the two remaining players here against three. Back Boathouse. Can they do it? Silent off to a good start there. Eliminating one. Just two more players to go. The trade's through. Down to Kispawn. How many times has Kispawn upset the situation for Anubis? Can it happen again? As he's being baited right now. The turret, the jiggles. Trying to I hold this up. Rush into the site and see if you get the round. Oh, but here's Tuna from the back of the side. Paranoia is good. Does allow him to get one kill. We've got the pressure coming through. There's a lockdown, but it's actually a huge hold coming through from Anubis. Seeker's there to try to take the fight. The kid's board. He defends so down to eight points of health. Convented, we do get the guiding light through to the A site as everybody's piling in from A main. So pretty much a free site. We have Batty's going to be very careful. Dies before the door goes down. And Anubis are in a pretty good spot here. They get the, the spike down. So Five now it's, it's about post plant positioning and finding the delay if they possibly can. But two players on the flank through Gelato. That's a huge fight here. Frost, huge fight. Frost gets caught though. Oh no, that's a problem for Anubis here, Vasily. Well, at least Cole is still inside the side as well. The smokes are coming out from Tuna. It's a three versus two. The ding coming out. The right clicks continues. It's still this two versus two, rather. It was a two versus three, but Cole has done a great job. There does on that pistol, Ooh. so it definitely was studied. We've got the paranoia opening here. They're going very aggressive straight through towards that B lobby position. And that's going to allow Project S to actually at least get one kill. Yeah. That was a Spectre kill, kill as well, so it's a force spike coming in for Project S. And we haven't seen that in a while. A frenzy kill coming out there for the defender side too. And here comes a surprise peak, but it's not going to work out. Silence going to get dropped. And that opens up the B site, but they still have already an early rotation. It could be a flank to flank right now from Shalabi. One enemy remaining. And there is it. There is the reward of that flank. Finds the Spike perfect planted. timing onto Kid's spawn. Lion Claw. Thunder footing around. Everyone knows he's there. Mm -hmm. So no element of surprise to work with here. Looking very good for Anubis. And there's a quick fall line, but they're going to take... And the if looks to be... If Project S... Is this one looking to hold by Jen there, but he's getting pinched. All the util is denying anything here for this defense. And Lionclaw does manage to at least get one, but it's looking quite good. In fact, actually, Janix just works on a lot of frags, but Shalabi... Oh no, Shalabi did that with the Spectre doing massive damage! And that's just going to leave us in the one versus one. Project S still able to survive here if they're able to take down Crollo. Silent looking to see if Crollo's going to try to get that play, that walk around play. It's insane. But Crollo, he's got so much time to work with. He's going to sit up top in heaven for the moment. And if he drops, that's a sound cue.
and they virtually have the same HP pretty much at this point throughout all these trades. Oh, the timing! Oh, my thumbs up. Chinese gonna go straight through that, of course, and it's gonna be very difficult to hold on here by the pyramids. At least actually finding one crack using the cage here. Beautiful work there from Zizox, and that's gonna split up the angles really well here. Meaning that Project S are struggling, just sitting on the side trying to find their engagements, but it's all controlled oh. here by Anubis. Looking fantastic, Batty is. And we're pushing up towards this side for Project S though, but they're still being contained and denied by Utility on the other end. Yeah, some engagements, maybe something, they can find something, but that's the question. There's a quick pickup by Silent. But you would want Anubis here not to give these kinds of engagements now to Project S. Oh. Take the close ones by all means, but that's not going to work out this time for Tuna. Frost at the back of the site, alone, so isolated tough. with the Spectre. Frost, though, could make the difference. We can find some damage here. Can he get the gun out in time? The shock darts are going to Marshall. be his unfortunate death, and no vision here. Will we get a pot shot through the wall? Spike planted. No, he doesn't want to give the position away. Oh. The Flash gave his position away too. So they know there's going to be one potentially towards the entrance of B main as Shalabi. He's putting the, uh, the, his own smoke, sorry, towards the entrance. And that gives it and, set, and uh, confirms that he's actually coming on that plane. Gets one there, gets to devour. And the chase comes through! Gonna get it! This is a really good start for Anubis. Yeah, the wall's gonna come up too. Actually, they're spraying across on both ends, and Tuna's gonna be able to reheal out of that, and this is making it so difficult eight. to get into this site right now. Sometimes in these comps, you kind of have the Sage Wall to come up at the same time too, if you just want to run across. But when you don't have those flashes to try to go across and get into the site, you're just sprayed back against you, and it's just very difficult to get through. Now, if Anubis can keep five players up in this situation, One it's gonna start to get really bad. Props to Ryan Central because I'm looking at his notes. Well, actually, let's talk about it a little bit later. Shalabi with this operator is going to drop the first one. It's going to be Bati, so that's a little bit of information lost on this mid side. But as that happens, Project S are still lurking up towards this mid side. We're pressing on both ends. Defenders, attackers on different spots. Such an open map right now where it's just going to be all individual positioning in place. Yeah, this is kind of insane. Oh, the neural theft, though, from Zizox. That's going to create problems. Now there's a minute to play, so usually with this kind of a situation, you want to just hold if you're Project S, so then the information is not good anymore from that neural theft. The Lion Claw has found a moment there, there's a whiff to allow Lion Claw to get deeper, and the toxic screen goes up, so there's position now for Lion Claw, there's the flash through the wall, trying to play against very hard engagements, can't make it happen. Shalabi with that operator superiority is making it sing, and it's just now one left. Silent trying to get some damage here. At least Sizox goes down, but there's no... A little bit for their execution, or once they really try to get into the site. And this time they put it up, and they try to, to get things out towards this B site. And cool, there we go. Crollo can't escape that. Two opening entries here. Three, in fact. Now Kismon's gotten into the site. And this is a lot better for Project Death. Yeah. You can see they're trying to brute force things here. They're trying to keep it simple, as things have been going pretty poorly, but there's still two players left. The two versus four retake here for Anubis. Shalabi on the operator has been feeling it. They don't have to give the peaks though. Shalabi has to close the distance. I don't know that there's a rifle down on the ground for him to do that with. He is looking for the flanks here as well. Knows that there is a possibility for that one. Zizox as well, remaining. unable to find what he needs. And Shalabi probably just has to save this now. He's carrying so much value in his hands. He's in a tight spot to try to save this though too, right? players are closing him right next to him. He's holding towards the elbow side where that spike is still going to have to force him out of position out in the open towards mid. So far as we do have Project S closing in, now they definitely know that he's heading out towards this B side. Oh no, Shalabi repositioning there on the B, not working mid, but controlling that long corridor and that's going to be an early pick. Project S now. Trying to use the numbers, charging in once again to the safe site. Yanni with the knives though, will take down Crollo, so it's looking good on the entries. Here, Tuna holding it behind the pyramids, gets a second frost though, also with the support there with the Hunter's Fury. It leaves Silent now, a lock in this position. Waiting for the flanks, Batty takes down one of the flankers, maybe they can go back here, Shalabi. Quick kill, dashes back, Tuna in the action there, able to take down one as well. It's not looking good on his site take. Although we have one player, Yanni, back site, it's still very difficult. Spike now Spike down, down on the ground, B. thanks to Zizox, in the 2v2. Oh, down to 3 HP, somehow Frost is out. And Zizox creeps. This is huge. 
They might not expect this right now. Trying to st focus so much here towards the archway side, and you don't have any Viper utility to block off like they did on the last time that they tried to plant. The timing there. Tzizok just barely missed that line of sight to Yanni, which really helps him out. And they, they're going to try to walk through. Yeah. All the way through spawn. 30 seconds left. This is huge. Because as you mentioned here, Frost only has 3 HP, so this has to be, has to be the biggest kills, but they're running back into B. They were trying to do a fake here, I think, especially with the shot there in spawn, but uh, it's not going to work out here. Zizox has the angle. He can just play the time here. He's got a cage ready as well if he wants to make life more complicated. And there's another peak. Seconds left. Time is of the essence. They've got to stick the spike now. They've got to try to stick it. Zizox One takes it down, remaining. falls back. There's no time now for Janning to get this done. The round's over. And and the battle stays a stalemate. Yeah, Project Dash really want to make this one work, but they do actually have a lurk towards the B side of the map as well, so there are options. And with this push from Silent as well, definitely a lot of options. You've got the tripwire there also. Shalabi is quite aware of possible pushes here, and I like this. It's waiting for the move, but Shalabi is going to get the better of it, and that's going to start the okay. action as they start to push into that. Spike still down three versus four here for Project S. They can pick up this spike again later on towards this A main, but the, the main control is going to be on these on this duelist and controller. But unfortunately, the duelist falls. That's going to be Kiss Bond. Silent with the lurk continues with another kill. They're going to try to pinch into the side, but he only has one HP. Shall it be waiting? Oh, the shot misses. Shall it be gets the 4K? Looking for the ace as they know it's going to be a flank play at this quickly by Tuna. Empress is popped. Tuna wants to take the fight straight to them, but he's going to get run down there. Frost trying to hold by the pyramid. Great flick. Find Silent looking for more damage, but he'll get taken down as Kiss rounds his way across the site and Zizox now trying to drop in trying to use this distraction to his advantage Neural Theft comes through sees where every single player is and those ones close takes him down Kid spawns out of the picture the cage blocks line of sight for the next 1v1 as Zizox works his way around patiently and he's gonna make it happen and if we get the round opening up with the Hunter's Fury there, the aggressive Hunter's Fury to clear these oh, opening no. positions, but no! Kisspawn goes down! Friendly fire as Batty takes him out with that Hunter's Fury, but still, they've got the sight, but Sizox has been fantastic. Wow. Again, the cages allowing him to close the distance, and Crollo oh, gets the timing onto Batty, and that leaves everything onto Lion Claw against three, but it's just not gonna happen. No position and no time. The fuse is gonna come in, but... Man, that Cypher, Zizox is playing it so well on this retakes, and things can change here for Project S as they move on to the defensive side. But Anubis eyeing up that A site. They do have a Lurk on the other side of the map, actually. That Lurk might find a lot of value. We'll have to see at the same time the A push is coming through. This one by, by the Pyramid here, trying to hold on, gets the first one. The Devour comes through, finds a second, and that's good damage done, making this really competitive But Zizox. It's going to be doing the damage here for Anubis once again. Still a close situation though, but Crollo able to recover against Batty. One versus three now, and that's Hav on, uh, on a map where you're on a lore buy and you're back against the wall. And again, quick aggression on this round also. As you get the push coming in, the Sheriff and Yanni's doing pretty good work here, but you can see this hold around the pyramid so they can get a whole my god, Lion Claw shuts down Tuna with the Sheriff. Great work, and with the trade of the Shock Dart, that's position away. I think, was he caught by that? Cage, Cage comes through, he doesn't want a second chance here. He's just gonna try to push straight away. That pressure's on from the Spike, and he's gonna get hit. Driving that orb right now, and they have a Viper Pit, so they can move in and get the plan here off the Viper Pit. Yeah, Tuna's going nope. down in this, this uh, retake utility, he's already Panning out quite nicely, stopping this push. They can't get the distance they're looking for. The shock dart will be evaded by that dash of Shalabi. And it's, I mean, they're just getting pushed straight back out again. Project S doing, yeah, it's back to B here for the rest of the Anubis team here, looking to close this one down. Project S are in a lot of trouble. It, oh, this could be saved though. It, there is still a Viper on the site. Silence in position at the back. If he can hold this, this would make the difference. There's the transfer. It's good for Silence. He's keeping Project S. Fast push again to this A site. We'll see what is going to be done here by Anubis as they try to gain control. Project S in a lot of trouble right now on this defense. Is it going to be a retake? Lion Claw really needs to try to find a way to get this frag. There's another player close. Wins it. Huge kill from Lion Claw to keep Project S alive. Again, they can't afford to lose any rounds here.
Shall I be by Pyramid? He's going to be stuck on one side because of the snake bite. That's awesome support there for Lion Claw to finish it off. And Crow is on 26 health. He's got the snake bites. There's so much time left on the spike. Already got it halfway. There is nothing that he can do. He was holding the Hunter's Fury, was able to get two kills, forced players out towards that default spot where they actually have it set up for the sneak bites. Because what you saw there when Trollo is holding back, or Trollo, sorry, holding back towards the A main. Sorry for Project S to keep themselves going here. But I wonder who's experiencing more tension. Yeah. It's definitely going to have to be Anubis at this point because Project S, they still have a map in hand, right? So they're playing with confidence. It's starting to come back, but finally we get an open site towards B. We're going to get a plant at the same time too, and is this going to give an ult at the same time? Unfortunately not for Crollo. So they have to play more passively back in the site. But the double initiative for the retake, this is going to be very hard. It will be very hard indeed, and here comes Project S. Frost takes down Lion Claw, evens up the numbers now. Batty though with the trade. Oh, that was a... Small chance there for Crow. It doesn't pan out, but it certainly will on the okay. second time against Kidsborn. Holding on to the backside still. Okay. There comes the Viper's Pit off to the back of the frag. 5 HP here for Batty with the Odin in hand stuck in the Viper's Pit. Creeping around. They've got no idea where he is. This Viper's Pit might actually be helping him at this point. I don't even know. He's going to actually find Crollo. So indeed it's going to help him. But there it goes. And he's in the open. And control the A side rope first. But they can always shoot their way out of the situation. Oh no! On the clock. Project S can try to reset the situation, and indeed, the reset, the catch of Zizox looking for information, and now it's a quick dash to control the B site, but the spike's still in mid, so they don't necessarily have to go into B, but, I mean, after that frag, I think they're going to well, feel it's more than safe to do so. Ross is just oh. the jumping classic in the face of Bati, and here comes the rest of the rotations all the way back towards... Another dark cover ready to go, and that can help to split up this post-plant setup, and there it is. There's a dark cover, goes to that B main position. That's going to allow an easier entry here, maybe dis disabling one of those players. That will force this up to have to swing out, but we'll see. So hard. It's a high-low stack towards the back of the site, Dan. One of the hardest angle to take over. And yeah, it is so, so hard. Looking to try to take the fight. Now the first one. Oh, it's going to work out. There's just one left. It's down to Silent. He's got the ghost in hand. Trying to just control. Tuna actually does get concussed there, but is able to slow things down. Has some assistance, but I don't know if he'll be able to survive indeed. Tuna's going to go down, and a spike plant will be pretty huge here. Able to play a post plant scenario could also offer up additional chances for kills, but they can't get the spike across. He's hiding inside that spot, so they have to support him back. He has to get the trade, but the thing is, the other players are already inside the site. You wasted a lot of time. The rotate's One already coming across remaining. as well. Impossible down, to win. Hey. There to hold it down, solo fashion. And oh, they go. Okay, Project S are going to cut noise and rotate into B. And there's a dark cover, and oh Shalabi, he's going to actually whip the satchel jump. It doesn't matter because they're going to be coming through regardless, and he's going to turn away at the worst moment. That could have been huge for Anubis, but instead it's going to be a very labored, difficult two versus four retake. Tuna has to try to go in now on the edge of the cloud burst, but there's three players ready for that one. And I feared the worst with that judge in position, but Anubis just didn't have the feeling that that push was about to come in. Too good in their bonus round. So far, Zizox trying to make it expensive at least to try to bring down some guns with him onto the next round. And I like this tap. Time for that part of the default Project S. And, well, we get traded out there. Shall it be? That's it. Carlos ready to go there as well from ropes. So, able to come out ahead here, Anubis, on that, against that mid control. And that's really unfortunate because Project S was, they needed that mid control because they were then going to come back together again to split B. So now they're in a position where splitting is not really possible. They lost all that control in mid and all they have now is players in B main. That's the only presence on the map. Anubis are probably going to spot this. Oh, this is going to be huge. That paranoia could have hurt a lot as soon as he jumps spots. There you go, he comes out and even blinds the rays coming in, but Silent getting even closer, narrowing the paranoia, capitalizes on the kill. Tuna though, into the cage, out of the cage, Five trying to just toy with Kiss Spawn here. As the ISOL, they're ready to go as well. This is feeling very hard now for Kiss Spawn, alone against three players. Can isolate players. Can he get the kill though? No, absolutely not. Tuna, crush the push. Yeah. Especially as the spike will be coming this way. But there's a rolling thunder. A defensive showstopper goes through to protect themselves for Anubis, trading out that utility. Who's going to come out on top? Charlie has to defend here. It's very, very difficult. Lion Claw converts Tuna from up top, but still. It's not enough from Tuna to be able to stop them taking the site and getting the plant. 
That was such a beautiful Rolling Thunder too. It looked like it was going to go towards B Heaven, but it did not. It went out towards that B main for a beautiful control for Project S. A take towards this B site. The rotate's coming back, but look how big this rotate's coming from. They have to move out quick. Double flank towards this B main, looking to capitalize on a triple setup at Pillar and in the back of the site. Double P comes through, but in fact not even needed. That gets the res secured. They have to go and peek and they have to challenge. It's working. It's not going to work out here. It's just Fatty at the back of the site against so many players. Teleports across to Jani. They can play together now in the 2v2. The time is ticking away right now. Very quickly down to Fatty. Resets the situation. Can he find the timing? Oh, he's just trying to buy time. The classic, the chase. Oh, oh no. Man. Running the time down. And that's it. Locked it away. It's going to be right now Anubis on a half buy off the plate storm. It misses the cross. And he gets punished for it. But it gets quickly traded inside the A site. Seasox is looking to peek out. But the control is coming in from the attackers. And Baddy's ready for that one. All the focus. I is there. Exactly. No distraction to play off of this Neural Theft comes through. Paint shells to clear out elbow. That's going to create some forward Five space players. there. And that could create the pressure. The judge coming in. Ready oh, to oh, eat oh, up oh, these oh, players. Oh, but does get taken down. It's up. This is coming. Yeah. Towards eight. And you're playing passively for Zizark right now. The whole oh. setup is over there. They can play the retake with the lockdown. But he decides to use it right away. Out this paranoia or from the shadows in the back of the site. So Bati is going to look to close it in. And here comes the paint shells. That may break it. And he breaks it fully. But he gets pushed out from the heaven side too. And they're Raids are continuing back and forth, leaving only Lion Claw on a three versus one. On his a most of these rounds with the Killjoy utility, because one, that's one thing that Killjoy is good at doing, getting the delay, but in a hold out four because Shalabi in this forward oh. position. The late retake into mid comes in, Van Silly, now, and Shalabi's in some trouble here, trying to get through. Oh, he oh, popped up the boom bot, and that takes down Jack. Shalabi, that's going to get his teammate left. ready. Shalabi with the jiggle peaks, gets it. Great stuff out of there as well. And now there's just two players left for Project S. They don't have much time. Kidsborn, great shot, has to hold it. Oh, this rocket goes out, but it whiffs because Kidsborn was so fast on the shot. And that's a huge chance now. Two versus two, recovery here. Oh, but not quite across the angle in time. Silent now, has to try to do this. Satchel out, catches Crollo. There's one left, the paint shells go out. If he resets and Zizox doesn't know which side Silent's gonna come from. It's a guessing game. Here for both players. Love it, love it. Lots of noise, and Silent with the check has to go for the peak. The turret there to cover, commits behind it. The turret's so annoying, into the peak again. And there comes the rocket out from Silent to, oh no, Sizox concussed, still gets a headshot. Oh my God. Denies the showstopper, unbelievable stuff. See that, and there we go, but still there's one player hidden away, it's Frost. Up in an elevated position, doing damage with the Phantom. Two kills to deny this. In comes Tuna. What's going on? Absolutely, and now we've got another very fast aggression coming into the A site. Trying to brute force this one, but Zizox at the back with the Vandal has a fantastic angle. Resets for the second, gets it the third, but the flick isn't good. The reason Res comes in for Shallaby to get him back on his feet. Two versus three here for Project S. Still a chance, although they don't have much in the way of weaponry. The spike has to cross. Still a flash and an aftershock ready here. The Lion Claw to find a way to do this, but there's no rush. They can try to make their way through, but the cross from Tuna is... And I, look at how much control he has right now, but Crollo pulled out the blades, ready to go, shut down, doesn't expect to see Jani up there. The trade comes through though, and a 4v4 now, we have a reset. The lockdown's there, ready for Anubis if they want it, for the retake. This is good. This is gonna give a lot of information away. They, I like the fact that they keep the spike on too. Uh, onto the omens, they could TP away as well. And let's see if they're going to be able to creep around the A site. Massive frank there onto Tuna. And again, we know that we're going to see a lockdown. It's a very interesting plan. He'll have to see how well it works out for Project S. They know surely that that lockdown's coming. Cover going up. There's a dark cover. They may have to try to retake screens here because I don't know how they're going to deal with this this lockdown. Kispawn's getting close to it. It's so difficult. To oh my god, just. Trying to what? TP up and away. They, I think they had to make the call, the audible there, to just push into that screen's position. They've given up the entire site now. They're going to have to retake. And that pressure's on the defuser's coming in straight away. Shall it be petitioned? Yanni, oh, the flash comes through. It's pretty good. Able to take one down, but it's a trade. Lion Claw now is going to actually be able to get the space, thanks to the paranoia, to fall back. And it's going to reset here to a 4v4. Still a great start, though, because that was three players that was damaged. You already forced up the heal coming out here from Tuna. And as they try to regain control at the B Heaven site, they already set up for Project S for the crossfire here at the bottom of B site. 
Oh my oh, god. There's Ox. The confidence. Lionquart backing up on the walkway. Seeing what he can get done. The reload, though, will betray him as Anubis. Uh, three against one. They're looking really good at the moment. It's all going to be on silent with the ghost. 100 health. Spike planted. The ghost. Definitely doable. Yeah, and one of them is low HP too, right? For Anubis. So, Shalabi looking to fall back. Going to try to play the pulse plan. It's all going to be on the information play by their omen. And they are splitting up here in this position. So, there is some risks being taken. But a lot of pressure now towards the A main to start. A, a dash across towards the A ramp. A fight to try to get one. But it's going to be one here from Project S. That silent goes in. Double satchel from Shalabi. He's going to be able to take down the kiss pawn towards the A site. And this is just going to be shambles, Dan. Oh dear. Oh no. In the smoke. Gets caught, actually. Tuna in deep push at the Close. worst moment. The chance here now in this three versus three. After shot to clear some of these positions, shall be waiting for the moment. Actually has a boom bot left over still. That could be useful. Doesn't want to get the position away. There's the lockdown. Oh no. And this should stuff this retake for Project Death. Unless they can find the kill onto it, it's going to force them to push and find it. And of course, easy cracks for Sizzox. And Shalabi. Spectres, one Phantom, low buy for Lion Claw. A breach right now at 13, 14, and 0, Dan. It's not to talk about the score, but it is to talk about the initiator having zero assists. So as much as you want to try to elevate your teammates to try to get a couple of kills, they're not finding anything off the utility for Lion Claw. It's just him trying to frag it out. Looking to make this happen here on this A site. This could be it right now for Project S. They've got to dig deep and find everything to try to defend here. Silent goes down in elbow. So the defense is being removed on this A site. The spike is cleared now to get that plant, to start that timer as the retake effort comes through. Pressure's on right now. They're going to get a plant. That's going to be a little bit easier here for Anubis, okay? The Killjoy Molly is going to get denied right away, but here comes that retake off the roll. Uh, should I say the full line? It's a great full line indeed. They're going to try to defend. This is it. Trying to do everything. Use everything they can. Project S. Only 